Understanding something intellectually is very different than understanding something spiritually. To understand something spiritually, you must experience it. And in order to experience it, you have to experience it in your imagination as an I am, but you must be able to feel it. Our feelings are the things that take place in our body. It says, Neville says, and I have this on uh, next to my bed where I live in Maui, make your future dream a present fact by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So whatever it is that you would like to experience in your life, this, remember, your imagination is yours. Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined, okay? Henry David Thoreau had probably the greatest definition of success that I have ever heard. He said, if you advance confidently in the direction of your own dreams and endeavor to live the life which you have imagined, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. It will chase after you if you can place into your imagination what it is that you would like to attract and begin to feel it. Listen to Neville. This is one of my most favorite quotes from The Power of Awareness. That which you feel yourself to be, you are. And you are given that which you are. So assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your wish. And your wish must be realized. So live in the feeling of being the one you want to be and that you shall be. Every feeling makes a subconscious impression. And unless it is counteracted by a more powerful feeling of an opposite nature, it must be expressed. Your feelings are different from your thoughts. Your feelings are what you experience in your body. The dominant of two feelings is the one expressed. I am healthy is a stronger feeling than I will be healthy. I am healthy says I feel healthy and I feel healthy. I feel great. I don't determine if I am well on the basis of what it says on a piece of paper or on the basis of what somebody else out there tells me. I live my life feeling within my body that I am strong, I am capable, I am able. And that is not just something that I say. It's not just an affirmation. An affirmation is an intellectual exercise. This is a spiritual knowing within that I am well, I am content, I am prosperous. But the words that Neville used there are the subconscious. Every feeling that you have makes a subconscious impression upon your body and upon your awareness. Now you, you need to understand the subconscious mind of yours. Your subconscious mind rules your life. 96 to 97 percent of everything that you do is done as a result of your subconscious mind. And when your subconscious mind gets programmed, it goes ahead and responds to whatever it is your conscious mind has placed into it. I was 18 years old. I was in the United States Navy for four years. And they sent me to a school in Bainbridge, Maryland to become a radioman and a cryptographer. And we spent an hour a day, every day, for the first three or four weeks we were there, on a typewriter, learning Morse code, okay? And my conscious mind had to program my subconscious mind. Now this subconscious mind of yours is operating all the time. 
You're sitting here watching a, a, a television show. You got up, you picked up your remote control, you turned the channel on, you got dressed, you ate lunch, you went to the bathroom, you go to work, you get into your car, you drive to work, you put, you don't think about what I'm going to do. Everything that is going on in your life, everything, everybody in here in this room, you know, you got here through your subconscious mind. You didn't have to think about every single thing that you were doing, but there was a time when you did in order to learn that. This habitual subconscious mind of yours rules your life. So I'm 18 years old, I'm taking Morse code. Did, did, uh, here's the alphabet, a little bit of it anyway. Did da da did it it da 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 did da da did it did it da da did da da did did it it did it did da 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 did da did da 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 did da 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 did. That's A through P. Check it out. That's 53 years ago, and my subconscious mind is still keeping track of the da da did it da 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 did it did it da. You're doing the same thing, only you don't use Morse code, but you've programmed your subconscious mind with did it, did it, da did it, I can't do that, did it, da did it, I'm not very attractive, did it, did it, da did it, I'm overweight, did it, da did it, da did it, I can't do make things happen, and it's did it, da did it, da did it, it's still there, 53 years later, you and you go through your life with this subconscious programming, with uh, with an awareness that. You are not in charge. You're not able to extend or transcend this, uh, this way of, of thinking. This subconscious mind of yours is most impacted by your feelings. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. Write it down. Stick it on the wall next to your bed. If you came into where I sleep, you would see that. I look at that all the time. I want to practice putting into my subconscious mind the assumption of the feeling of what it is that I would like to attract into my life as if it already existed and to feel it, not just to think it, but to feel it. Neville's law of assumption says this. If this assumption about what you would like to become is persisted in, until it becomes your dominant feeling, the attainment of your ideal is absolutely inevitable. You must first assume the feeling of a wish fulfilled in all aspects of your life. So you have to say to yourself, what does it feel like to be prosperous? What does it feel like to, to be content? What does it feel like to, to be well? And I had to remind myself of that when I had this uh, leukemia diagnosis. I had to remind myself, I was, I, I was down about 30 minutes until I realized that virtually everything that shows up in my life has been a blessing. Virtually everything. The, all of the struggles, whether it's in, you know, addictions or whether it's in uh, living in foster homes and being abandoned, whether it's my wife and I separating, uh, and the pain of that, whatever it might be. A, a dear friend of mine was Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Um, she passed away a few years back, and she was the one who wrote so much about death and dying. She had a wonderful and important message for us. She said, if you shield the mountain from the windstorms, you'll never see the beauty of the carvings. And the beauty of the carvings comes from being able to be in a state of gratitude for the storms that show up in our life just as much as the things that we would like to have show up in our life. You have to start retraining your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind, it responds to what it is that you suggest to it. Now the intriguing thing about your subconscious mind, your habitual mind, is that um, it can't make a distinction between what it is that you are feeling as a result of what you have placed into your imagination and assume the feeling of it and what you are experiencing every day in your life. If you tell, if you go around feeling unhappy, depressed, miserable, sad, whatever, if you, your subconscious mind says, oh, so this is what it is that you would like to attract into your life. And the universal subconscious mind to which we were all connected 
that we call the creative source of the universe, the divine mind, God, the Tao, whatever you might want it to be, and it will begin to offer you experiences that match up to what it is that you are feeling. So your body responds to what it is you place into your subconscious mind. You have to retrain it because 53 years later, here I am, did da 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 da. It's a, it's there, but that's innocuous. That, that's not that's not going to hurt anything. But if I've programmed into my subconscious mind feelings of poor me, I can't do anything about my life. Other people are responsible for the reason why I can't get myself happy and healthy and and so on. If I if I live with that kind of consciousness within me, you're going around feeling it all the time. Your feelings, your feelings create the destiny that you want. If this assumption is persisted in until it becomes your dominant feeling, the attainment of your ideal is absolutely inevitable. And what's the paramount feeling that you want to have? The feeling of exactly the feeling of love. Love is the feeling you must assume. This is the message that Anita brought to me and brought to all of you. That when you place a feeling of love, which is all there is, it seems to me, on the other side. Is that right, Anita? I mean, it's just, it's just nothing. When she tries to describe this, and I'm pushing her. You know, I'm 71. I'm cramming for my finals. I mean, I, I, I want to know what's it like over there. You know, we all want to know that. And all she says is, it's just pure love. It's just, it's a love that you are bathed in, if you will. Bathe yourself in that kind of love. Live from that place, and know. God is love. The fourth wishes fulfilled foundation I call attention. This is really crucial. Your imagination is able to do all that you ask in proportion to the degree of your attention. So what kind of attention do you place on your desires? Let's say well, I'll give you an example, the one of, of myself with this business of this uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Um, my kids just got me this wonderful gift. I hadn't had it before. They wanted me in the 21st century. Uh, it's called an iPad. <laughs> I, just got, I just got my first email address, and I'm not telling anybody what it is. Because... <laughs> so, but it's just this wonderful, they got this wonderful feature that I really think we should have in life. Um, and it's called trash, <laughs> which I had never seen before. They were explaining this to me. So anything that comes in that you don't want, you just push this little button like this, and it goes like this. <laughs> it actually moves, and you can, and it makes a little sound. <laughs> and then there's a little button over on this side that says delete. You know, so it's something you put into the trash, and then you hit delete. It's gone forever. That's the kind of way you want to use your attention. There are two kinds of attention, according to Neville. Subjective attention and objective attention. Subjective attention is different from objective attention. You want to use subjective attention, not objective attention. Neville says there's an enormous difference between attention directed objectively and attention directed subjectively. And the capacity to change your future depends on the latter. Whatever you have placed into your imagination, you always go to your reality and call that which does not exist as if it did. I am, and you, I have a rule about it. It's don't complain and don't explain. You don't have to explain what you have placed into your imagination. It is totally yours. One of my great teachers in my life in my early doctoral years was Dr. Abraham Maslow. He said, become independent of the good opinion of other people. Trust yourself, subjective attentions, you, and only you, capital Y-O-U, are the subject that impacts the burning desire in your imagination. You are living and feeling as if your future dreams are a present fact. Objective attention, you become the objectified result of other people telling you what you can't do, what's impossible, and so on. Subjective attention, mine is mine. I, I have an image that I use, I call it the superglue method. 
And when I have an intention about what it is, including doing this program, when I have an intention about making this program a reality, and it involves a lot of money and a lot of, a lot of expense, a lot of people, a lot of things have to come together. It involves going over into my writing space every single day, never giving up on it. For, even if I don't feel like writing, four or five hours every single day, because I super glue, I super glue my intention into my imagination. And I don't allow anybody else's opinions to do anything to distract from that. I don't care if they tell me I can't do it or if it's impossible or it'll cost too much or we can't do it. My intentions are super glued there. And I have that do not disturb sign placed on my imagination and it is mine. Use this. Don't allow anybody else's opinions. Don't allow what it says on the internet. Don't allow the research. Don't allow what anybody out there tells you is possible or not possible for you.